AlphaTauri team that won here as Toro Rosso, Pierre Gasly wins the Italian Grand Prix. Hello folks and welcome back to the Monza Paddock mid pack up at the end of an incredible Grand Prix with an amazing result. Pierre Gasly is a Formula One Grand Prix winner for Alpha Tauri. Say it again, Lawrence. Pierre Gasly is a Grand Prix winner for Alpha Tauri. I didn't think we'd be saying that at the start of this weekend. No, nor me. Hell of a race, hell of a drive. Uh, and what a great guy. Just a, a brilliant thing to happen to him after a horrible year that he's had. Um, and really, I think the writing had been on the wall all weekend. That car had top five potential from first practice onwards. He was really surprised when we talked to him after Friday practice at how quick that car was. Mm. I mean, we've talked about Pierre Gasly all year, yes. haven't we, about how impressive he was. But when he had a car that was capable of doing it, he was making the most of it in Friday practice. He definitely wouldn't have expected this result, though. No, he qualified in 10th and pretty much stayed there at the start of the race. The guy on the move was actually Danny Kofiat, once again, making best use of that Alpha Tauri on the hard tires, exactly as Gasly had done one week ago in Spa. Yeah, so at that point, Pierre, I, you know, I wasn't even tracking his race no. at that point because it was a reasonably strong race, but nothing that exciting. It was that pit stop that really did it. Well, this is it. Everything changed around the time that everything really sort of went crazy. It all began, of course, with Kevin Magnussen retiring his Haas at pit in. And in the laps that followed, that is where everything changed. Gasly, of course, had pitted on lap 19. 19. But then Magnussen retired and then the pit lane closed. And after the pit lane closed, Mercedes called Lewis Hamilton into the pits. And that, I think, fundamentally changed the race because a lot happened else apart from that, but it was Lewis's penalty that really mixed things up. No, it totally was. Essentially, there are a number of different timing pages and one of the timing pages has all of the messages from the steward's office on them. So if a driver runs wide through turn 11, it'll say driver 44 runs wide through turn 11 or driver such and such has left the track at turn three and re-entered. And there was a tiny little message there, pit lane closed. But of course, the Mercedes pit wall, they weren't paying attention to that. It actually took somebody back at Brackley to phone it into the guys after Lewis had pitted to alert the team that they'd made this bungle. Mercedes don't make mistakes, no. generally speaking. So this was a huge one to make, especially when they were leading. They tried to make the best of it on Team Radio. Lewis, it's going to be fine. You can fight your way back through the field. But at that point, the race was done. Interestingly, though, the biggest effect or the biggest change of the race hadn't yet occurred and that was the red flag which was brought out when Charles Leclerc had a monstrous crash when we came back out from under the safety car through Parabolica. That threw a red flag out and everyone came back into the pits. Lewis Hamilton at this point leading. Lance Stroll in second as the only driver not to have pitted and everybody behind having pitted Pierre Gasly in third place. But of course under the red flag rules, you can change your tyres in the pit lane. And yeah. so Stroll essentially got himself a free pit free stop. Free stop. And he was, very, he was very lucky. He admitted himself that that was good fortune after the race. But at that point, even Pierre was still in a great shot because of that because they've closed the gap. Lewis would have taken penalty. That meant it was between Lance and Pierre on the restart. And what happened at the restart was Lance Stroll essentially fell asleep. He was gutted. So he said he, he knew on P2 there's not as much grip on, as on, on P1. <laughs> So because, had, of, well, because it was a standing start, first time in F1 history. Exactly. Sorry, to totally forgot about that. Not a rolling start as we're used to, standing start. And drama. That's what we want at yeah. that, those kind of restarts, isn't it? That fight down to turn one, because that's all often one of the most exciting parts of the Grand Prix. So this was where Pierre Gasly effectively won the race, because he made the most of Lance Stroll bogging down or getting, getting a bad getaway off P2. Got ahead of him, and that, that was it, effectively, because uh, Lewis took his penalty. Pierre's in the lead off the Grand Prix. He said after the race he could barely believe that he was in the lead of the Grand Prix and from there he controlled it, he didn't overdrive the car. This is it, it's not like it was just handed to him because also coming through with the McLarens. Carlos Sainz putting in a great run towards the end, cutting down a couple of tenths a lap, a couple of tenths a lap and when we got to that last lap he was in DRS range, he had it and it looked all the world like Pierre Gasly's tyres had gone because he couldn't get the power down out of the corner. Coming through the parabolica the car was squirming around underneath him, the tyres were finished and Carlos had DRS. Can you imagine Pierre's heart must have been going at that point? He's got a car that we knew at the start of the race was able to keep up with Lewis mm, Hamilton. Mm. Pure performance in that McLaren. And Pierre managed to absorb all of that pressure on the, on the fact that he's about to win his first Grand Prix. I just I genuinely can't believe it. It was a brilliant race and a brilliant run uh, to the flag. 
a wonderfully young podium as well. Lance Stroll holding on to third place in the end. Lewis putting in a great drive actually to bring it through to seventh place uh, at the end of the race. So yeah, I think it had it all really today's Grand Prix, but the biggest thing it had, of course, is a first time Grand Prix winner in Pierre Gasly. Mm -hmm. The first time we've had a French driver win a Grand Prix, and this will make you feel old, since <laughs> Monaco in 1996 with Olivier Panis. I was 15. How old I was were you? 10. Pierre Gasly was three months oh, wow. old. Uh, and that just shows you how long it's been uh, for him. And there isn't a person in this paddock, I don't think, who begrudges Pierre the win after the year he's had, tumultuous time he's had. Of course, he, his house only got robbed a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and everything else, being demoted, of course, we came here this time last year. It was only his second race back with Alpha Tauri. His head was bowed, his shoulders were slumped. He was not in a great place. He just lost his best mate. And here we are one year later, a race winner does this change anything? I think it changes a lot. I think what has impressed me most, firstly, about Pierre is that when you have a knock like that, it either goes one of two ways. Yeah. You either don't recover or you come, become back stronger. And that's exactly what he's done. And now he's given those guys at Red Bull a headache because he's got to push it without Alex Albon struggling. Is he now an option at Red Bull? I don't know. Is he, Will? Oh, you're smiling. What do you think? It's a really interesting one because you look at the driver in that car today and that is a driver who we we can seek and absorb the pressure, who can win races. But we know the same the same Pierre existed last year. The same is true of Alex Albon. We've seen it at, at every level for Alex Albon as well. I still question if if Red Bull is really set up for two drivers to be winning races at that team, or if it is just so focused on Max Verstappen at the moment that it makes the job of that second driver almost impossible. You know, going back to Alpha Tauri mm -hmm. has given. Pierre, that confidence that he that he needed, sort of the pat on the back and the arm around his shoulder. The, uh, I don't know if I want to see him go back to Red Bull because I don't want to see him get beaten up and kicked to the curb again. I, don't, I think he deserves more than that. But I think now, as you just alluded to, he's a stronger guy. Like he's come back stronger after that really tough summer when he found out that he got the beat down. His friends came around him. They've really g'd him up a lot. They give him that confidence. And it's results like this. There's not many people in the history of Formula One who can say they're a Grand Prix winner. And I just wonder how much he's going to be able to take from that, that confidence that he gets. And that might, you know, make him look a little bit stronger. So if he goes back to Red Bull, he might not be as brittle as he was. Well, and I do wonder at this place at Monza, where 12 years ago, a young Sebastian Vettel for Toro Rosso took that win, whether there will be something playing in the memory banks for Helmut Marko, whether there'll be something toying with his emotions saying you remember last time this happened with the team like this you remember who it was you remember how special he was to do that you know was he lucky do you make your own luck i think there's an element of both of those things today and pierre was brilliant and it's not like this is a fluke it's not no. like this is the first time charla clerk said earlier this year pierre gasly is the most impressive driver in formula one Pierre was uh, congratulated by Charles as one of the first drivers in uh, in that Parc Ferme today. Pierre is riding the crest of a wave in this sport at the moment. There are, I think, probably only Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen who you could argue are racing more or as consistently and as well as Pierre. And what a huge thing to say, to put him in the top three in the entire field and driving at that at such a high level. Do you think there's anyone? I know, I, I completely agree. Maybe Lando Norris, I think he's driving at a high level, yeah. so maybe those four. But that's what makes it so hard for Helmut Marko and, Chris, and Christine Horner to just let this go by. Yeah. Because it, as much as they won't probably want to give him another chance, because it kind of makes it look like that decision wasn't the right one, they've got to be pragmatic. And if Pierre is just driving at this level, and they want a two-car team that can actually deliver and maybe help Max when he needs help, it's a no-brainer for me. Absolutely. Um, Brilliant day, great race, phenomenal result. I don't think any of us were expecting it, least of all Pierre. No. But he is a Grand Prix winner, deservedly so. Um, yeah, I just couldn't be happier for the guy. It's going to be one hell of a party tonight, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? And so, so, what a shame, we were in the same hotel as him last year, and there's a couple of the, of the Alpha Tauri yeah. guys there this year. Not Pierre though, he's at home, isn't he? <laughs> We can have a drink for him tonight. We'll so. have a drink for him tonight. Quite a large one, I think. Congratulations, Pierre. Felicitations uh, from me, from Lawrence. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.